What's up everyone, it's Nick and I'm back with another video and this time I'm finally going to talk about my New York Yankees but not exactly while I'm all that thrilled but no you're not going to see me throwing and kicking things either because I mean after those three wins against the Mets if it weren't for that maybe I would be throwing and kicking things right now but am I exactly thrilled about them right now? No, not at all. Nine and one start to the season and ever since then 10 and 13 and oh the injuries just when we thought it couldn't get worse last year here we are now unbelievable at least dj lemay who's back and at least aaron hicks is not on the il yet i'll say yet for now because you never know at this point point. and my last baseball video with about matt olsen i did say at the beginning thank god aaron judge is back but as soon as that happens, right back to the D. I I mean, IL. Although, they finally showed some life against the Mets. I mean, even though they lost those first two games, finally, in the next three, they showed some life. Now, I didn't get to watch those games because I was busy, and I had work. But then, I watched the recaps, and, hey, Davey Garcia, he looked really good in his debut. No walks and six innings. The one run he gave up was thanks to Luke Voigt making an error, and... Hey, while well, Luke Voigt's been holding it down offensively with this AAA lineup, he's still got a lot of work to do with his defense. I mean, actually, I don't even think he'll ever become an average defensive first baseman. But hey, when he came up in 2018, or when he was traded over to the Yankees, I thought he'd just be another Shane Spencer. But okay, I think that I was wrong about that. I mean, yeah, he had that terrible second half last year, but he was hurt. If he's healthy, actually... I think I might have a lot more faith in him offensively than I thought I would at this point because 2018 I really thought he was overachieving but I think that I may have been wrong I mean even with that second half slump that he had last year he still led the team in walks Aaron Hicks I actually might do a video on him pretty soon to say that no he's not a bad player and yes his batting average is terrible right now but He's still getting on base at a very high rate. And hey, how about that home run he hit to bring some life back into the Yankees when they look dead in the water in the first game of that doubleheader against the Mets. And his walk rate is actually even higher than what it was in 2018 when he was fifth in the league in walks drawn. His strikeout rate is actually much lower than it was last year. His strikeout rate is like right around where it was in 2018. His WRC Plus is actually pretty solid right now, but I think I'll save the rest about Aaron Hicks for another video. But you know what though? In that first game of that doubleheader, the fourth game of that series against the Mets, the Mets also shot themselves in the foot from when Andres Jimenez, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, when he mishandled Michael Conforto's throw from right field, which should have gotten Thyro Estrada out, and then also Edwin Diaz's wild pitch, but hey, the Yankees won. Why be mad, right? I was very happy about that. Oh yeah, I actually didn't get to go into their walk-off wild pitch, but yeah, I gotta look at that. Hey, Aroldis Chapman pitched his first scoreless inning of the year, and I'm definitely also gonna make a video on him because there are people who are actually clueless enough to think that he's not a good closer, like... Do you even watch baseball? His career numbers are actually very comparable to Mariano Rivera's. Why Mariano Rivera is still the GOAT though? Playoff success and longevity. But Aroldis Chapman, if he keeps this up for long enough, he could catch him. But right now, no, Aroldis Chapman is not better than Mo in the all-time ranks. But in terms of what he brings to the table, or what he's been bringing to the table since his days in Cincinnati... He does give Mo a run for his money, and yeah, if you think that I'm crazy, uh, just look at their numbers, okay? What's going on against the Rays? You know that game against the Rays that just happened. We're gonna talk about that very soon. You know those three wins against the Mets. I mean, the Mets are just doing Mets things. I actually said myself that I think that their lineup should be good enough for them to even make the playoffs, considering it's eight teams per league in the playoffs this year, but. Yeah, I mean, the Mets are just the Mets, so, Pfft. yeah, sorry Mets fans. Oh, and that Gio Urshela home run, that walk-off home run, 
Yeah. Now, Gio Urshela, when you look at the traditional numbers, it looks like he's fallen off quite a bit from last year. But actually, when you look at the Saber metrics, I mean, yeah, his numbers are down from last year, but it's not like he's falling off a cliff. In fact, the Saber metrics do actually prove that he is still above average as a an hitter. And defensively, yeah, the Saber metrics show that he's not as good as his highlight reel shows, but actually, last year he was plus one in defensive run saved he is now but in much less playing time given that this season shortened but I remember him being negative in defensive run saved for most of last year I'm not sure when he got to plus one but all right I'll take it as it is but he's still nowhere near what Nolan Arenado or Matt Chapman are defensively yeah his highlight reel may look like it but looking at these numbers no and not better than Brian Anderson or Evan Longoria either, now that I'm looking at the numbers right there. <laughs> However, it's still better than Miguel Andujar can ever do defensively. And yes, I do like Miguel Andujar, and I do want him to succeed, but honestly, his defense is putrid, and with the emergence of Gio Urshela, there's just no place for Miguel Andujar anyways. And I'll also rather have DJ LeMahieu play third base as long as Tyler Wade's not playing second base. Like, if it was the way it was last year with Glaber at second, Didi at short, and LeMahieu at third, okay. But, you know, we don't have that luxury anymore. Miguel Andujar is not even the second best third baseman on the Yankees anymore. So, yes, I wish Miguel Andujar well, just problem is he has no future with the Yankees at this point. Gary Sanchez. Now, that pinch hit home run, that pinch hit Grand Slam was huge. However... He's looking really awful other than that. I mean, his power numbers are still great, but besides that, the Saber metrics, those do not bail him out at all. And while a high strikeout rate doesn't really bother me most of the time, when you're putting up these numbers, yeah, that's not good. When you're striking out nearly 40% of the time, yeah, not good. I mean, I don't mind that Aaron Judge strikes out a lot because... He actually produces when he's healthy, and look, I'm not a Gary Sanchez hater before that comes in the comment section, just so you know. Look right here, okay? I don't hate the guy. I'm rooting for him. I want him to do better, but truth be told, he's doing horrible right now. But that pinch hit Grand Slam was great to see. I hope at some point he does get on a hot streak. In fact, I think at some point he's due for one, just Truth be told, he's not playing well at all right now. Now let's talk about Garrett Cole, who got off to a dazzling start to the season. However, now he's been a little shaky lately. But am I worried? Absolutely not. Was he worth that contract? I would still say absolutely yes. If you're going to panic right now, you are crazy. And in fact, I would even go as far as saying you are not a true Yankee fan if you're really that worried about Garrett Cole right now. Remember? 2009 CC Sabathia, let me remind you, he got off to a pretty shaky start that year. May, he did really well, but June, he was kind of flat, but the second half was when CC really turned it on and became that ace that we all wanted so badly and signed him for big money for. That was when he started carrying the Yankees rotation. So if you're panicking over Garrett Cole right now, calm down. In fact, Garrett Cole's last two starts, which were indeed shaky, He's pitched 10 innings in his last two starts combined. And in those 10 innings, he does have 12 strikeouts. Seven in this latest game against the Rays. And he's been prone to the long ball. Oh, yeah. 16 of the 19 runs he's given up this year are from the long ball. And does he need to stop giving up the long ball? Yes. But, again, stop worrying if you are worried right now. For real. You guys wanted that top quality ace, right? That was the missing piece from last year's team. Well, you got that in Garrett Cole, and he's been that for most of this season. Even the best pitchers do have some rough stretches from time to time. Max Scherzer, Mike Sororka, and Charlie Morton aren't doing so good this year themselves. A lot worse than Garrett Cole. So, there is absolutely zero reason to worry about Garrett Cole. He will be fine. So... Right now, while things aren't so great for the Yankees, and in the 60-game season, yeah, it's a little more room to worry than it would be in a 162-game season, but still. Let's worry if things are like this in October, okay? Because right now, the whole team is hurt, and is it fun to watch? No. But, well, I mean, I wouldn't say 
not exactly the whole team, but almost the whole team. But, hey, let's worry when it gets late in the season and things are this bad, okay? Because right now, it's not exactly the best of times, but it could be a whole lot worse. And, hey, at least before all the injuries started piling up, the Yankees were rocking and rolling. And when they get healthy again, we should expect them to rock and roll, all right? Whether you think that this year's championship will have a an asterisk next to it because it's only 60 games this season. Hey, longer playoffs though, but whatever you think of it. Hey, we're not going to make it like that South Park episode where they were just trying to lose, right? We still want to win, right? We're still playing to win, so let's get after it. Alright, let's go Yankees. It's the end of this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and tell me what you think. And oh yeah, the trade deadline. Mike Clevenger to the Padres. I didn't expect the Yankees to get him anyways, but that's a big W for the Padres. Sure, he may have his maturity problems, but it's easy to look past when you know that he's A, one of the best pitchers in baseball. B, the Indians really should have asked for a lot more than they actually got. I don't know how the return package wasn't much more than it actually turned out to be, but I'm not going to really get into detail about that because there are other videos out there that you can check out if you want. But that's it for now and hopefully the Yankees can get healthy and start to play baseball like we expect them to again. Alright, I'll see you next time.